In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Spouse of the Holy Spirit, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the Ascension in this diocese, as in many places. And we also celebrate Mother's Day today. And so we want to celebrate in a special way Holy Mother Church, because this is the great mystery of Ascension, is that our Lord ascended into heaven Although he left us in his visible presence, he still remains with his church in his invisible presence, in his sacramental presence, especially with the Eucharist. He sends his Holy Spirit to be among us, to continue to animate the church, his mystical body. And so in the ascension, we are have to exercise the gift of faith, especially par excellence, because the early church, they had him for 40 days after the resurrection, where our Lord appeared to them many times, it says here. You know, he, he appeared many times, he instructed them, he gave them many proofs of his resurrection from the dead. And so they had that great consolation and that great comfort to see our Lord, to speak with him, and then he said, you know, that he must go. And that although he will go, that he will remain with them and send the Holy Spirit to remind them all the things that he's taught them and to be their consolation, for the Holy Spirit is the consoler. And what does he console the people in? And is that he consoles them and to strengthen and bolster their faith to believe that although Jesus is not seen visibly, he is still just as much present in his church after the ascension as he was before because of this, of his real presence in the Eucharist and of all the sacramental signs and, and gifts that he gives to the church in his priesthood that he has conferred upon men to act in his person uh, you know, so that as the saints have reminded us that the saints in heaven don't have, they have the consolation of seeing God face to face. But Jesus is just as present to us as he is to them. The only thing is we have this veil that hides him, this sacramental veil. And so that's why we must exercise faith. And in this year of faith that we're celebrating we are reminded of the fact that our Lord is with us today. Just as he has not been any less present to us, on May 12, 2013, he's not any less present today than he was on that first Ascension Day. He is still with us. He is always there to guide us. And this is the, the great mystery of the, uh, and the mystery of faith that we have is that the church is Christ's presence on earth in the mystical body. And sad to say, I think that many have lost sight of that, especially within the church, and that we need to be reminded of that, that the church, when the church teaches, it is Christ teaching through his church, when it teaches uh, the ordinary magisterium and the extraordinary magisterium, when it teaches something de fide, or ex cathedra, but the teaching of the church is not the teaching of Peter or Paul, but the teaching of Christ. And recently, you know, with the great consolation, we also have of the Vicar of Christ, Pope Francis, you know, exercising the ministry of the Vicar of Christ, has reminded in a letter to his fellow bishops in Argentina, but it could be for the whole church. It doesn't just mean Argentina. He reminded the bishops that anyone, any politician who is pro-abortion or is using his authority or publicly promoting anything that is not just abortion, but he says anything that is against the, 
sanctity and welfare of the family she may not receive, must not receive Holy Communion. Uh, that can even be, you know, promoting, of course, homosexual unions. And it's not just politicians, it's any Catholic, because they're public figures, but if someone is holding something which is contrary to the teaching of the church, then they are not with Christ. And Pope Francis reminded the bishops in Argentina of that, and um, it goes to all bishops of the church, that same uh, teaching. So we hope that the bishops of the church today will listen to our Holy Father and truly act upon it. You know, our Lord, when he said to his disciples, he said, go and teach all people, baptizing them. And he gave them his authority. It is not their authority, it's his authority that they are to, to, uh, to, to preach and to teach, and that's with their, his authority they have the, the obligation to instruct their faithful in what is necessary for them to save their souls. And that is why it's so important that they take that to heart. It's not, a bishop's not a bishop for himself, or a priest is not a priest for himself. He is first and foremost there for Christ, and is to be his representative. And so therefore, that might need be some particular bishop's style, but it's not his style. It is what Christ wants. And Pope Francis has reminded us, what is Christ's preference? Is that pro-abortion politicians must not receive communion if they are uh, opposing the teaching of the church and contradicting it. So we have that great grace even today to hear Christ speak to us through his church. And, um, you know, what a great consolation we have as Catholics in that we have this uh, voice of Christ speaking to us and all of our Protestant brothers and sisters who don't realize it. But many of them may be um, in it without really understanding it, kind of recognize that the church, the Catholic church has an authority which they don't have because many of them look to the church and see the constant teaching of the church and are strengthened by the fact that the Catholic church has not changed its position on any of these moral teachings from day one, from the ascension and even before that. The, the apostles were strengthened by our Lord and have been given, even today, the gift of the Holy Spirit, as he promised he would send, for them to remain steadfast and consistent. It's why the church is not a human organization. It may be consisting of humans, but it's not. It's a divine institution. And the church will always, you know, heaven and earth will pass away, but the church will always be because the church is the mystical body of Christ. And um, one of the things that Padre Pio used to say, and as we look out, you know, and we see the sun rise every day, and we were reminded of how important the sun is to our existence, he said that the world could sooner exist without the, without the sun than without the Eucharist. So that we, uh, attending every time we come to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, we are truly at the center of the universe, because Christ is really present, and truly this is what sustains the whole creation. Christ offering himself, being offered to the Father, and uh, this is the great consolation that we have, that Christ is with us today, and as he says, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. And so as we celebrate the ascension, we are reminded that, you know, although Christ has gone, he is still with us, and that he has given us the hope to know that he has gone ahead to prepare a place for us. That our hope, you know, as we have faith to believe in our Lord's words, we also hope that what he has said he will fulfill. And that our hope doesn't rely on our efforts alone. Of course, we have to cooperate, but that our really our hope lies in the fact that Christ has overcome and that he will assist us if we are 
um, trying the best with his grace to cooperate and to do what he wants. If we do his will and remain steadfast and faithful to him, he will truly fulfill that promise of preparing a place for us so that when he comes again, whether it's at the end of the world or whether it's the end of our, our personal life on this planet, that he will welcome us into the kingdom, into that place that he has prepared for us. Uh, sad to say, you know, many today, many people today do not know that they have a supernatural end. Uh, I always say it's like they have spiritual Alzheimer's. You know, Alzheimer people don't know where they are or who they are, where they're going. And that many today in the world have spiritual Alzheimer's. They don't know why they're here, why they're on this earth, or where they're going. And that's why the world seems to be so out of control, so disoriented, because it's lost sight of its supernatural end. We need to, as Catholics especially, help point the way for those who are lost, who are confused, who have been, um, their minds have been confused by the, the world, the flesh, and the devil, and they have lost sight of their purpose and their goal in life. And uh, we need to, especially as, as Catholics and as faithful Christians, to that's one of the best um, witnesses we can give is be a compass to point people in the right direction. And with Our Lady's help especially, who has always assisted the church and continues to assist the church from her place in heaven, we ask Our Lady in a special way to help us to be uh, good and faithful compasses to those around us that we may point the way to Christ and to their eternal destiny with Christ for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.